Well, that is curious. So these two things right here are the trash cans at the end of my driveway waiting to be picked up. In fact, you can see it over here in the picture, maybe. Uh, usually I don't see. Oh, I'm in the driveway. I'm going backing up. Is that why I see a different view? Interesting. All right, welcome to Love's down here in Three Rivers, Texas. 184 miles, 3.6, or I'm sorry, three hours, 16 minutes, 255 watt hours per mile. So just outside of four, four miles per kilowatt. Yeah. Okay, whatever, this is the way it is. Um, for the last five miles, we averaged about 218 which is doing pretty good while well, we're down to 65 actually oh well, we went up to 70 for a little bit but anyway that's pretty decent let me let me go get things going there all right yes yeah, so it is a version 2 charger um yeah we only ramped up to 49 kilowatts i am sharing with another car and actually i have a feeling i've seen this car earlier so i think they arrived like 10 15 minutes before me which means actually they should be tapering off okay whatever it is what it is um and it's saying if i write what i guess if i charge up 35 minutes Okay, we'll see. I'll let him go. I mean, it's just going to be slow. Which means that day I came here, coming back from the superchargers, I mean, yes, it was a warm day. It was it was packed. Right now it's not packed, although I'm sharing. Um, it's like we're every other car or every other charger. What? No, I don't want to do that. Yes, I could possibly unplug move over one and replug but let's just let it run i'm not in that big a rush and speaking of people who are in a rush what are these cars doing here they're parking where people need to come through i don't know just it's just the way it is right all right so what can I tell you? So, coming down I-37, let's skip ahead, right? Uh, there was a couple of phantom brakes. They weren't strong phantom brakes. They were kind of weak. Uh, it looked like, in one case, we're going in through a dip, and FSD kind of, hey, there's a dip there! That's what it looked like. And then there was a spot where, I mean, welcome to Texas, the, the, you know, the roads are kind of bleached white if they've been out long enough. So we came across a spot where there was some tar along the outside of the lane and FST all of a sudden like shifted over to the left. Like, whoa, what are you doing? <laughs> That's scary. But I mean, whatever, it, it, it's fine, okay? It, there was nobody around me. If there was somebody around me, they might've been freaked out, but it's, it's just the way it is. Okay. Um, going back to the beginning, yes, to a large extent, it's pretty good. I mean, there's, there's no real, oh my goodness, we almost died there moments. There is a spot where, actually, I've used that as a reason to give you a D before. So there's a spot where FSD says, Oh, I want to go into the inside lane. Well, gee whiz, there's a BMW in the inside lane. I'm going. Break on FSD off. And minimal lane change is set, which actually have been set, has been set all the way up to this point. Okay? We just came out of minimal lane changes. Yes. And we're... Well, it doesn't tell me on here. The supercharger in Corpus is only 78 miles away, right? I was thinking about stopping at uh, Bucky's or maybe even uh, 
Is it Selma? So, whatever, whatever that cop, the, the speed trap town is. I don't think they really do speed traps anymore, but they used to be, they used to have cops on top of their courthouse. Yeah. Uh, whatever. That, that's a long time ago. Okay. Um, so there was that, that was kind of like, what are you doing? And since I had minimum lane changes on, he beeped at me once or twice, which may have been because I had minimum lane changes on, possibly. Who knows? Um, but otherwise, it's fine. Uh, most of the time, we were more or less at the speed limit. Okay? I mean, a few times, yes, I went up a little bit, but most time, just do the speed limit. Um, which means I had cars going by me, but I'm also going by cars because they're not going to speed limit. They're going under the speed limit, right? So it's a mix. But whatever. Peace and harmony, it's all fine. A um, couple of places, the construction was like, oh, come on. That's no fun. But whatever, it's it's okay. It's, it's good. It, it all worked out. Let's see, I've gained 5%. Okay. I'm going to be down at the park at 3.30. 3.20. Okay, whatever it is. <sighs> okay. Um, what else do I want to say about this? Was there any significant things? Not really. I mean, nothing that you haven't heard before. I mean, sometimes it's just stupid, which is has become normal everyday activity. Right? So we've cho navigation chose to go down I thirty five. I mean, I don't know why you don't go down Mopac to try to avoid some traffic, which is what I would do as a regular person. But, okay, whatever. It, it's FSD. Oh, I'm sorry. Texas Loop 1? One loop? I, f I forget what the official name is. But, okay. There's that part. Um, yeah, I don't... I mean, there's a couple places where they had construction traffic and things were backed up, but that's kind of normal, right? And I'm kind of—I'm still stunned. I—I I drove for three hours, seventeen minutes, for 184 miles. Okay. I'm just saying, I'm just thinking that when we were doing the 60, 65, we were going a little bit above four miles per kilowatt hour and we ended just under it. Okay, whatever. Um, part, of, part of it is preparing, preparing myself mentally, so to speak, for doing a trip. Oh, so let me go back. So. I, I don't know. I mean, there's so many different cars that, that like, ah! But there's one car that stood out, and it, it's a Chevy Malibu. As we're coming down 37, we just got on 37 for a little bit. There, there's a guy from, I think it's Oklahoma, who's coming by, and he's coming across the lane. I shift halfway over, so I'm halfway into the breakdown lane. And then once he passed me, then he gets over and slows down. Like, what? what? Yeah, you were sleep dream, dream driving, weren't you? That's why I would guess he was sleep driving. Okay. And then there was another Chevy Malibu that had to do a some kind of zoom zoom around the cars. So, but I've seen like five different Malibus today. So I'm kind of stunned. I didn't even know Malibu was still a thing. And I guess it is. So it, it's also curious from that viewpoint of why is Malibu still a thing? 
right? I'm just curious. Okay, whatever. I'm going up with charge. Okay, just for grins, Kyle. I tried uh, dumping some water over the, the handle and the cable, actually. Although it feels warmest right here. Okay, we'll see what happens. Okay, so what's interesting is I don't hear, hear the air conditioning going when I'm outside the car. So I, I don't know. Whatever. You know, so while I say it's 98 degrees, it must be hot. Maybe it's not as hot as I think it is. I don't know. Whatever. Peace and harmony. Hookie dookie. Oh, man, that was 30. How much was it? 36 minutes. Added 26 kilowatt hours. Yes, this station is slow. Um, it's almost like as if it's Electrify America, right? For those of you who know what, what that reference means. Anyway, so 36 minutes. We went from 12% to 49%. Added 26 kilowatt hours for a cost of 992. And that should get me in pretty decent shape to the Corpus Christi supercharger, which is an hour eight away at 78 miles. Let's get going. All right, 79 miles, one hour, 10 minutes, 312 white hours per mile. Although a lot of it was 70, 75 mile per hour speed zone. So uh, yes, I'm gonna use more energy. Let me get Judd plugged in. Well, the good news is I immediately hit 251. Oh, there's 251 back. So we're hanging right around 250. This is a version three and it is busy. What, it's, uh, there's one out the end. There's one on the other side of the car next to me and there's another one on the other side of the other car. So yeah, it's pretty busy. All right, so kind of coming out of three rivers no big dramas now minimal lane changes is now off so whatever the car decides that needs to do as long as it's within reason i'll let them do so there are two times where i felt like it was closer than let's say polite too close to be polite to move into the left lane uh, there's a couple of times when I had to use the right turn signal to have the car return to the right lane. Um, and I, 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 I bet I forgot to mention this, but coming into Three Rivers, as we're coming up to the spot where we're going to do the U turn to cut, go into the gas station, FSD goes to the outside lane before we get to the U turn. And there had been a pickup that was kind of following us. And as soon as he saw that we moved over, he moved the inside and he was up next to us. FSD blocked us out on purpose. Now, I shouldn't say on purpose. It's just, uh, what? Senior moment. Yeah. Okay. Similar thing happened coming into Corpus where it's, um, we're, we're, we're a mile away from making a right exit to go down to the superchargers FSD wants to move into the middle lane I presumably he's like oh wait this lane is going to be exiting it's an exit only so I have to move over yeah but you want to exit okay whatever so obviously navigation FSD have some some work to do here I mean Usually it's worked pretty good. 12.3.6 is not all that great. Now that's the part that's killing me. Oh, 12.4 is bad. Oh, 12.4.1 is bad. It's so bad it's worse than 12.3.6. Anyway, you've heard me talk, say this before. I went up for charge. So other than a few moments where it's just being stupid, it's actually doing a pretty good job of saying, oh, I need to move over to the left. Why? Okay, I left, I left off one here. 
so there was we're coming up on an exit the car in front of us is going out the exit fsd turns on a turn signal to go left to go around this vehicle that's getting out cancel you just, and then brake on fc off send a message are we trying to avoid being stuck behind the car that's going out the exit huh think about it whatever whatever I think this task has turned out to be more and more complex as they dig deeper and deeper into it you know I'm, I'm not saying that AI is not the way to go it's just the the amount of different videos you have to have to train the system uh, anyway whatever peace and harmony it is what it is let's move on from there so there you there you go it's just oh it's life right um let's see what do i want to charge to uh, my charge limit is 80 percent i don't really have a good idea at the moment let me think about it some. Okay, time complete. 2.55? Okay, I'm, this is after I unplug. I'm at 50%. I added 27, 28 kilowatts for $8.99. I even paid less. Okay, whatever. Peace and army. There you go. Let's get going. Okay, 22 miles, 27 minutes, 317 watt hours per mile. Um, I just came up on the sign for Padre Island, so I thought I'd stop and take a look at it. All right, so we went by a 60 mile per hour speed sign. For some reason, FSD or Tesla read it as 25. I don't know. All right, one mile, five, four minutes. 305 watt hours per mile? Really? I wasn't going all that fast. Well, I guess now I'm starting to deal with the air conditioning too. Huh? I don't know. Okay, whatever. Um, so, mission accomplished. Oh, come back to the side. Let's see, it's uh, three and a half miles down to the end. Do I really want to go down there? Not really. Um, Actually, I want to get heading back. It's already 3.30, dude. All right, so there we are. Um, FSD perspective, nothing much really to say. Um, nothing you haven't already heard earlier today. So it's all good. Okay, 24 miles, 34 minutes, 270 watt hours per mile. Yes, sir, Bob. Let me go record some stuff and let's get plugged in. All right, this is what they really should have out there at Three Rivers. I mean, I can see why Three Rivers might be popular. I mean, it's in between San Antonio and Corpus. Um, yeah, I think it's exactly halfway in between, actually. Uh, and as popular as that place has been, every I've been there three, maybe four times. Yeah, every time it, it, it's somewhat busy. It's more than half full, okay? They really need a version three there. Or, or they really need another site. But anyway, peace and harmony, it, it is what it is. Um, you know, I, I'm one of the unusual people who actually rather drive someplace than to fly, right? How weird. Okay, whatever peace and harmony um actually not too much to say about this other than as we're coming by coming by one of the entrances there's a line of three truck pickups coming out two of them have the edge on me so i have to let them in and fsd will let them in the third guy is actually slightly behind me and he's equal to me but slightly behind being equal to me. He he doesn't stop coming in. He lays on his horn and what you oh you want me to break? 
No, that's not what you really want to do, is it? But what do you want? It's a Toyota driver. Are, are you tired of me saying this? Toyota drivers, I mean, Ford's almost right behind them, but Toyota drivers seem to have such little respect for safe driving. And it shows in their corporate attitude. Their corporate attitude is, well, we're going to lie to you and you're going to believe us. Right? I mean, I've heard people, well, they're about to come out with a million mile, whatever mile battery. No, Toyota's not coming out with some kind of battery. Toyota doesn't want to support China. Toyota's a Japanese company. Japanese company doesn't want to support China. Okay? If you're going to build batteries, you almost certainly have to work with China to some extent. It's only United States and, and maybe a few European countries that can find a way to make batteries without involving China. But there's a lot of work to do there. China kind of cornered the market on materials. Okay? That, it's that simple. Okay, whatever. Peace and harmony. Um, I'm already down to 137. Okay. Um... So anyway, there you go. How do you really feel about Toyota, Ray? And you know what? I really loved the Camry that I had. It was a great car. The only knock I had on it was I couldn't quite get it to go 25 miles per gallon. I had I had to hypermile it. What's well, hypermile? That's like when you shift it in the neutral as you go and shifting as you're going downhill on an exit. Right? You're, you're doing everything you can to squeeze as much as you can out of it. But it had nice power. It was a great five-seater car. Had a nice trunk. Oh, yeah, I loved that car. Not as much as I loved my, Je my Volkswagen Jetta, but because my Volkswagen Jetta actually was semi-luxury. Toyota Camry is not a luxury car. It's it's a run the mill everyday car. Anyway, whatever. Peace and harmony. Um, I've had 11 kilowatt hours already. So what what I really want to do here is charge to 80 percent and see how far that will take me. If I can bypass three rivers. Um, I think it's Selena has the HB plus. Um, that's also a version two, but hopefully in better shape than that one in three river three rivers. Oh, that's awful. Okay, whatever. Peace and harmony. Okay, I couldn't quite pull it off. I don't know. I, I don't remember what I did last time. Maybe I just didn't put in a charge and stop and just win. I don't know. But it definitely wants me to go through three rivers. Anyway, I'm at 72%. That should be good enough to get us. Well, you know, three rivers is slow again. You can always uh, go charge it shirts, right? So we'll see. But there you go. Time to get going. Okie dokie. Um, 155 miles. Two hours, 23 minutes. 273 watt hours per mile. All right, I did slow down to 65 um, just to try to extend it a little bit. And I did extend it to here to whatever this is off Jones Maltzberger. Um, let's see, I'll use 42 kilowatt hours out of the Corpus Christi charge. Okay, let's get going. Wow, okay bumped up to 250 kilowatts 251 um, I wonder if the other people were even pulling anything oh wait this car is not even supposed to be like that okay the other car is plugged in but may maybe uh, maybe I'm getting the majority of the charge who knows whatever um, what did I want to say it, it's so much better using the version 3, isn't it? Now, to be fair to all the version 2s, the one at Three Rivers, at least among the ones I've experienced, the one at Three Rivers 
is awful. I mean, it is just plain awful. And, gee, it's not really all that... I mean, you, you, we got 40... I think uh, 40 kilowatts. And it held it for a while. So, you know, that's not all bad. It's just nothing like a version 3. But anyway, knock on wood, right? Um, what I want to say. So, coming up... Oh, my goodness. Um, it felt like FSD was having some kind of issue. So when there's somebody has an entrance lane merging up into your lane, if in Texas, in a lot of places in Texas, they don't paint the dash lines separating the two lanes. Right? So, I mean, FSD had an issue there, and I think it's in particular the sun angle. We are kind of heading into the sun, we're a little bit north of heading into the sun, but still we're kind of heading into the sun. And so for three or four of those entrance ramps, FSD was move, was moving to the right. And when he moved so far right, he was actually in the entrance ramp as opposed to the lane he was started in. And he was coming up on the line that would have had him going into the breakdown lane. What is he doing way over there? And then a little bit later in the day, he had absolutely no issues with it. Who knows? Right? I don't I I don't know. Okay. Um and there was one place where a DPS trooper had somebody pulled over, I guess for a ticket maybe. That's what it looked like. Um and so there's a couple of pickups that came, were coming up. One had just passed me, so I moved in behind him. Right? You're supposed to move over for emergency traffic on the, on the, that's parked, that had their lights going. There's another ram coming up, and he decides, well, if you're going to be inside lane, I'm going to switch to the outside lane. So he's switching out outside lane. As we pass these vehicles, and FSD is pushing me to the right in the outside lane properly so that the ram can go by on the left. Instead, he's practically on my bumper. Oh my goodness. I mean, I got good news for you, Mr. Ram. If, we, if you had hit me, there would have been a DPS trooper right there to handle the call. And you would have been hitting a Tesla that would have recorded the whole event. Oh, it's always, these people think so. What are Peace and Army? Oh, we're on the East Base Road. Well, why couldn't I go down there and get on Base Road and come across? Why well, that stand? Oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. So, let's see where we're at. It's 35 cents per kilowatt hour. No, I don't want that. And no, I don't want that. It's 99 degrees outside. Did I want trips? I forgot what I wanted to do. Oh, I want to no, know actually what I want to see. All right, so whatever charge I take on here at East Base, is what's going to carry me home. And he thinks he needs three more minutes to make it to whatever level he thinks he needs to make it. All right, so maybe I'll just let it run a couple extra minutes and it'll work out. All right, so there you go. I'm going to get out of here pretty fast, I think. Um, the bailout option, obviously, is Johnson City. Right, if if if, because I'm not going to go, I'm not going to be hypermiling it up to 81. I'm. It's almost seven. I'm ready to get home. Okay. 
Yes, it thinks it's going to take about two hours to get home. And right now it says I'll arrive with 1%. Okay, so that's where, I'm, that's where I'll be going. I'll be, I'll be going for, let's get a little extra percent in there just to make sure I can make it. And we'll go from there. But Johnson City is a version 2. Although it's a reasonable version 2, it actually charges reasonably. Right? It's rated for 150 kilowatts. And if you're in the right spot, it'll jump to 150 kilowatts. Okay? Not like can't, can't, uh, Three Rivers. Okay. Um, anyway, let me get out and walk around just a little bit. And then we'll go from there. All right, so yes, I was ex walking around exploring. Um, so we plugged in at 648, I'm plugged at 717, which uh, actually was a lot more than I needed. So I added 50 kilowatt hours for a cost of $18.20. I'm at the state of charge at 80%, and it says I should drive her home with 38%. Oh man, okay. Uh, one hour and 57 minutes? Yeah, okay, that sounds about right. Let's get going. Uh, my daughter didn't say anything about owning a store. Surprise, surprise. All right, finally home. 113 miles. Two hours, two minutes. Oh, man. 251 watt hours per mile. That's pretty decent energy. Um... 28 kilowatt hours used on this last segment. And yes, I'm pretty sure that trip does not reflect the trip. All right, so I'm gonna have to end up doing some math to figure out what happened. But I mean, there, there's two purposes for today's trip. One purpose is to go get my pass. And um, as it works out, Corpus Christi or, or the South Padre Island Seashore uh, National Park was the closest place to go get it. And there's only like four or five places in the state of Texas you can go. There, there's other national parks, but those are the only ones that carry the pass. What? <laughs> Whatever. Um, okay, well, well, oh, so 280... U.S. 281 between, let's say, Bolverde, which is north of San Antonio, up to Marble Falls. It's maddening because there's a lot of 70 zone and there's some 65 zone. And FSD did not read, well, it may have read one. It didn't read almost any of those. So what that means is FSD says, or I mean, sorry, Tesla says, the speed limit's 55. Uh, did you check the sign? What sign? The sign that was there, it said it was 70. No, you're making it up. I'm right, you're wrong. And FSD, since it's a Tesla product, says, well, Tesla must be right. The human driver must be wrong. All right, so... Tesla says the speed limit's 55. The human driver has a speed limit set to 70. FSD decides to split the difference and go 65. <sighs> so as the human driver have a choice, either I can allow FSD and Tesla to continue to show how bad their software and hardware is, or I can put my phone in accelerator and bring the car up to speed. And since it's already been a long day, I decided to let FSD prove how bad he is. Or Tesla, actually, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's not FSD's fault, it's Tesla's fault. Although FSD is the one making this compromise position. And actually coming down 1431, at some point, FSD decided, well, you know, I think I'm tired. I think I'll go 50 miles an hour here. Break on FC off, human driver takes over and brings us out into Lago Vista. I, I don't I don't I don't know. Why does software get tired? And if it's not tired, 
what is it? Because it's like a behavior of somebody says, well, I'm tired. I don't want to do that work anymore. You, you, know, you know the people at the track, right? They, oh, no, I couldn't do an 11-minute mile. And when you come up and say, well, okay, uh, everybody who can make a 10-minute mile gets pizza. Anybody who can't make it gets nothing. All of a sudden, they find a way to make that 10-minute mile. I'm, I'm choosing those because those, if you're a runner, that those speeds are fairly reasonable to make. Yes, if you have physical problems, you, you won't make that 10-minute mile, yes. But if you're a runner and you can run marathons, chances are you could at least make 10-minute miles. Of course, who's the guy who's talking, right? Yes. Um, how would you do somewhere between 10 and 11 minute miles? But on the track, if you said to make a certain goal, I had to make a 10 minute mile for one mile, I could do it. Yes. All right. Anyway, so that's why I'm trying to describe what FSD feels like. FSD, well, I just don't feel like it. Yeah. You, you, you know what? My father would whip me for stuff like that. Okay, maybe not to that extreme, but you had the feeling that he was going to. Okay? My kids had the feeling I'm going to. Of course, they're all adults now. <laughs> okay? Anyway, peace and harmony. Um, so anyway, the other purpose, of course, uh, is of the drive was to get used to the driving. And one of the first things, by the way, because I didn't reset the trip, whoops, I don't have a trip number for you right now. I'm thinking I have enough video I can piece it together, but I don't have it. Um, let's see, so we left about 10, and it is now 9.30, which means it was about 11 hour, 11 and a half hour day. And if I wasn't driving, I was charging. Okay. Yes, there was a stop at the, at the park. That was a few minutes. Um, and a few minutes, take pictures there. Where else did I stop? Wow. No, please. Now, at the East Bass uh, base, a supercharger. Yes, I was walking around. That's how. I, that's how I still have thirty-seven percent. I actually put in too much, but I didn't want to mess with it. And whatever, I, I was looking for something. It ended up I didn't find anything, but whatever. Okay. Um, Let's see, there are several places where it felt like it was uncomfortable when it was switching lanes, like it was it was getting too close to cars behind us. Um, and there are times when I declare that a D, but I'm not sure I'm going to make it a D today, so what, what if we made a C minus? Would that work for you guys? I mean, it's still... It's nowhere near ready for prime time. It's nowhere near ready for robo taxi, period. Okay? There's those parts. Okay, I'm going to open charge. Um, and like I said, I'll have to go back and look at this Malibu. Uh, it's, it's, it's surprising me how many Malibus I saw today. And I think it's just I don't really look for them. And today I was paying more attention. It's almost as ubiquitous as a Model 3. Or maybe more, whatever. It's like 50-50, right? And yet, I never hear anybody talk about GM selling them. Obviously, they do. Or they did. There. We'll, we'll look it up and find out what's, what the deal is. Okay? I'm really, obviously, this is going to take us until sometime in the morning before I even start uploading. Ugh. 
Okay, whatever. It's been a long day, right? See you later. All right, time to catch up. So, yesterday's trip, 576 miles. So basically it's down the South Padre Island seashore and back. Um, so the, the uh, part over here where it was showing uh, trips, it was showing 708. No, that's not right. Okay, so that's completely bogus and useless. Let's go ahead and reset that now. All right, so 576 miles. It's, uh, what is that, seven? 17 minutes, 17 minutes short of a 12 hour day. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it up to you. However you want to interpret it. I, I don't really care. I mean, in my book, that's essentially a 12 hour day, right? If you argue that 17 minutes make a huge difference. Okay. Fair enough. All right. So how much energy did we use? So every time I stopped at the supercharger, I did have a view of what since last charge was. So adding all that up, we used 155 kilowatt hours. Okay. Total trip, 155 kilowatt hours. The, the total price adds up to $48 and 91 cents. The charging time Combined, it's an hour, hour and a half, or an hour and 34 minutes. The stop in San Antonio at East Base Road, that was probably about five minutes longer than I needed. Actually, 10 minutes or longer. The Three Rivers, I mean, I, I don't know. How, how, do you, how do you... Actually, it's very easy to say, isn't it? It was awful. Now, to have some empathy for those guys who use things like Electrify America, they would, they would have been like, well, at least it was working. And, okay, there, you have me there. It was at least given 40 kilowatt hours, or 40 kilowatts. But we were there for 36 minutes. And we got 26 kilowatt, hour, kilowatt hours. My first stop in Corpus Christi, I got 27 kilowatt hours, and that only took 11 minutes. And it's not just a version 2 versus a version 3 thing, it's the fact that that version 2 at Three Rivers is just running degraded. Now, don't, don't, make it right. no, don't interpret that as me putting official words in Tesla's mouth. But it didn't even make an attempt to spin up to 150. Right? And wow, that place was fairly busy. So, I mean, if I could have avoided Three Rivers, I would have. And to be fair to you, yes. Um, but Ray, you could have stopped at... You could have stopped at Bucky's. Yes, I could have stopped at Bucky's. And that would be a version 3. The Bucky's in uh, New Braunfels. Or the HEB in, in, uh, in Selma. Uh, oh, that's a version 2. Probably would have worked much better. But whatever. Yes, that, that version 3 and the version 2 and 3 rivers. Oh. That was horrible. Now, I remember the first time I stopped there, I was on my way to the valley to go see a, the SpaceX launch that they delayed uh, two days, I think it was. As it turns out, I should have stayed, right? But the thing was, there were so many people in Tesla's driving through, and one of the places they were going to stop was Three Rivers. The other place was Kingsville. Kingsville was packed, so I've never even been to Kingsville Supercharger. Right? I mean, the one time I went by with the idea I was going to stop, it was horrible. And I had enough energy to make it out to Corpus Christi. 
Now, Corpus Christi is way off the path, the path but anyway. All that, all that to say, I wish Tesla would find a way to add another intermediate between Three Rivers and San Antonio. Right? If you had, if you had, even if it was a version three, if it worked at version three speeds, as opposed to whatever it is Three Rivers is running, right? Three Rivers really should be replaced. And those charges pulled out and trashed. But those those guys are really suffering. Okay, whatever. Peace and harmony. So anyway, there you go. And so the the question some people have is Well you had to stop for an hour and a half, yes. I'd have four four charging stops. Like I said, the one in San Antonio, I probably went one two minutes, ten minutes too long. That's that's on me. The in the Charger Three Rivers is just trash. But it, at least it works. Is it horribly slow? It's horribly slow. But at least it works. Okay, so there you go. And let's see. Uh, my second stop at Corpus Christi coming back. Actually, I went over to check. There's a Chick fil A right there. So I went to Chick fil A to have, have lunch. At the Three Rivers, I got lunch. Well, I saw at Second Corpus Christi, that was dinner, right? Um, at San Antonio, I was walking around the, the the shopping plaza, whatever you want to call that place. Um, I guess they call it the Query Mall, um, which was interesting. It was curious, but there you go. Anyway, if it, yeah, you're right, dude. If you can't tolerate stopping for 20 minutes but charging your car, you'll never make it with an EV. Well, of course, you could hold your breath for the next magical cure. And some people keep talking about the magical Toyota chip, uh, replacement or, or fix. Um, they've been talking about that for almost 10 years. How they're going to come out with this new magical battery. You know, Tesla and Toyota used to work together. There was an electrical uh, EV version of the RAV4. Those cars still run. Think about that for a moment. Those cars are still able to drive. Now, they had short range, and they were basically a compliance car, California compliance car. But you can still run those things. What, who, who was there, who had his hand up in the back who said, the battery's gonna die in two years? Here you got a 10 year old Toyota that's still running with Tesla batteries, or actually maybe your pants locks, I don't know for sure. Okay, there, anyway, there you go. Let me go work on your uh, ice comparison notes and go from there. Well, uh, I said I compared it to a Chevy Malibu, and it's the more recent version of it, right? Um, so it apparently it's still in production. Anyway, they're going to discontinue it this year. Miles per gallon, 27 city, really? 36 highway, 36 on the highway is pretty good. All right, so we covered 576 miles. That's tra that translates to 16 gallons. Or cost of forty nine sixty, and electric cost was forty eight ninety one. All right, but so you have to go back and compare, right? So the two LT trim is thirty one thousand dollars. I didn't check to see what options it has. There's a one LS trim that is twenty five thousand dollars. The engine is apparently a 1.5 liter four cylinder and the transmission is a CVT. Um, to have a lot of people gone to CVT, I've heard some commentary like that, but um, 
and, and the commentary was mostly negative, not liking CVT, but if CVT is cheaper and more reliable, it makes sense to go to it. Whatever, I, I'm not saying anything either way, uh, just saying that's what it has. So at $25,000, that sounds like a pretty good deal, doesn't it? I don't know. Uh, on the other hand, they're going to discontinue it. I, I don't know why. If you have a gas car that is working, and so they make it in Kansas, if I understand right. How American it is, I can't tell you. I, I didn't go back and look that up, but I know it's made, it, it, it said it was made in Kansas. So that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? I don't know. All right, first safety. So they had red marks on the side side impacts and uh, pedestrians? No. I don't know. Anyway, so it's not nowhere near as safe as a Tesla or even the Supra Ascent. So you you are you are giving up some safety to buy this car, obviously. But I, I'll tell you, it stuns me how many how many different Malibus I saw yesterday. So I mean. I mean, I don't normally look for Malibus, so maybe I was paying more attention. Um, whatever. Peace and harmony. If if you are a petrol person, I mean, you have to you have to have gas. Although at one point five, <laughs> at one point five liter engine, this car is not going to move very fast. There's no way. But. I mean, there was a couple that went by that looked like they're sporty cars. Of course, dressing your car up to look sporty is not the same thing as having a sporty car. But whatever, there it is. There's your comparison. Yes, Tesla saved a dollar. Is it a dollar? How much is it? Well, no, it's almost 49. So that's 60... So we saved about 70 cents. And that 70 cents could easily be explained by the fact that I charged at home before I left. So if I if I'd had a day where I was charging on the road all day at superchargers, we would have been more expensive. For for energy costs. On the other hand, I don't know if I believe 36 miles per gallon on the highway that'd be incredibly efficient but whatever peace and harmony that's not what this is about this is just give you an idea i'm i'm stunned that they have a car that's twenty five thousand dollars that is that is the size equivalent of, of my model three I don't, I don't know. But GM's going to discontinue it. And I'm guessing it's because they can't make it profitably. That's a shame. Because it's cars like that you really want to have as a second, third car. It's relatively inexpensive. Gets pretty good gas mileage by this. Now, does it really get it? I don't know, but... Anyway, peace and harmony. Onward upper charge.